snow is falling upon us, but we don't care. We're just gonna keep going. We gotta do what we gotta do, right? Yeah. Is there a stamp on there? Oh, ho, ho, ho. yes, there is. Good morning, welcome to another metal detecting adventure. Let's call this our winter edition. It's currently minus nine degrees Celsius, so it's quite cold, but we're dressed up for the occasion. We're near a bridgehead where fierce fighting took place. Also the SS was involved, but eventually had to retreat from the advancing allied forces. We're with a big group today. Great company as usual. Happy to be reunited once again. We're gonna have some fun metal detecting today and probably some beers after. Well, as you can see, we're still setting up our stuff, but I have to run over to Matthias because he just shouted that he had his first signal and it might be some sort of dagger, is it? It is, it is right there. You see the grip part? Yeah. And then the hanger for the, the frog. Wow, so it's some sort of bayonet, right? You were the I think it's dagger a, man. I think yeah, he is the dagger man. Yeah, I think this one is actually a dress bayonet this time. Dress so. bayonet. I've seen Matthias finding at least three or four bayonets and well, this is yet another one that is very first signal. So we have the helmet man over there and the bayonet man. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they make a nice team this trip. Nice. On the surface. Right, there we go. Trip has started. Well, it has already started. I mean, Matthias already found a bayonet. So I was called over on the walkie by Faye, telling me that she found some sort of barrel. And that's definitely not a rifle barrel, it's something bigger. Yeah, that's, that's what I expected. This was once a Panzer Faust, and uh, it's blown up, unfortunately. Right here, that's the remains of the trigger mechanism to fire the uh, hollow charge. Uh, warhead that was on the uh, the Panzerfaust. So that's uh, some cool remains of the uh, action that took place here. So they were probably aiming at the other side of, uh, of the field. There was a main road going there and the Allies were coming from that direction. So they ambushed them. I wonder how it all ended. We do know that the Germans had to flee eventually. And Faye just found this very neat pocket knife. <laughs> Look at that color. I think that's made from Bakelite. That has really nice red shine still on it. Oh, that's the other side. I mean, all of the soldiers carried a pocket knife. Some of them had personalized ones. So I don't really think this is standard issue, but maybe they could buy these in their canteens and stuff. And the next find is very typical for the Eastern Front. I had a very loud, high copper signal. And you can see down there, there's a shell casing there. And it's a big one. Ha, look at that. This is a Soviet 23 millimeter uh, Schwak casing, which uh, was fired by an airplane. So this dropped from the sky. Really cool to find uh, Soviet relics because we don't find that too often. All right, so we've been at it for a while and Faye called me over with quite an unusual find. What do you have there? <laughs> a cannonball. <laughs> well, that's not necessarily what we're after, but wow, that's perfectly round. And I must say it's quite heavy. I'm not sure, maybe this is a, telling from the rate, I think this is a six pounder. Actually, uh, it's not exactly completely round. That's why you can see it's fire. Okay, well, I learned something new today. So this is probably a couple hundred years old. And apparently this, uh, this bridgehead that we're visiting, there was also fighting there a couple hundred years ago. That's interesting. Good morning. It's good to be back on Germany's Eastern Front. It's the second day, so it's going to be chilly and wet. 
There are some massive dump sites around here where you can find all sorts of World War II equipment, small personal stuff, badges, you name it. So we're gonna see if we can recover some of that history. We brought our sifter. We're gonna set that up real soon. It's my creation. I put a lot of work in that, a lot of thinking. And let's see if I uh, have the best model over here. I had a lot of inspiration from previous models. So basically all of this was a World War II trash site. There should be equipment here everywhere. So we're gonna check that out. So as you can see, it's foldable, so it fits in the back of your car. And it's almost two meters this side, one meter that side. There we go. It's all set up, it has six legs. First time we're gonna try this baby out. Moves nice. <laughs> so we're just making some test pits here to see what we can set up the sifter. And there's a lot of medical stuff coming up, small bottles, glassware, there's porcelain bits. There's some snow coming in, so let's hope uh, we're not gonna get too wet. Um, but we're gonna make the most of it anyway. So much debris in there. Jeff just pulled out this complete porcelain cup. Well, I mean, the air is missing, but there is a swastika on there. And I believe this is from the Deutsche Arbeitersfront. That's the predecessor of the Reichsarbeitsdienst. Yeah, that's the time frame we're after. So that's a really cool find. Yeah, this is a really weird dump. We're mostly expecting to find German stuff, but there is also Allied stuff in here. See, my buddy just pointed out this Nescafe US ration coffee bag. There we go. There's English writing on there. Nescafe coffee, soluble product. Really interesting mix of relics here. That's a nice start. Bro just handed me this German drinking cup. Um, this actually originates from a canteen. So this is an aluminum version. You can still see some black paint on there. So yeah, that's a cool one. Nice. Yeah, so all the way down there, I encountered something interesting. A piece of leather with uh, buckles. Let me see if I can get you down there. There you can see that. There's just fabric here all around. Um, and there's some straps with buckles. This could be a gas mask. We're not sure. But we're gonna excavate that together and find out. Let's see if we can loosen it up a little bit. I don't want to break it, so I have to be a bit careful. I see some movement there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think, I think we got something here guys, I think it's a, it is a gas mask. Yeah, it's a gas mask. Is this a civilian type? I think it is. It's interesting. It's a really nice find. The nice thing about these war dumps is that you can find all sorts of antiques in there as well. And Raoul just pulled out this, this old timer, look at that. Is that made from, from zinc? Yeah, zinc pipes. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. It's missing two wheels. This thing actually turns still. Wow. That's an awesome one for display. I mean, look at that. It's a nice prize. He has a hot spot there. I mean, there's some stuff here. They all just shouted Coca-Cola bottle. Oh man. That has been on my list for a long time, I can tell you. That's the beauty, man. <laughs> it's yours, uh, Chris. Are you serious? Yeah, you can have it. Yeah, of course, you can have it. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, I really appreciate that, man. Nice one. Oh, wow, really grateful for that. Yeah. That's a beauty. Yeah. You found some, some US rations here. Definitely, these Allied soldiers left this behind, too. Um, I'm so, so happy with this one. There should be date on it. There it is, 45, I think. 45? Yeah. 45. Interesting, it's man. very small. Yeah, I have to get yeah. my close-up camera for that. There we are with the close-up, man. Am I happy with this one? Really big thank you to Raoul. In case you haven't checked him out, his name is World War II Artifacts on Instagram. Make sure to give that man a follow. He deserves it. So we're all working together here and you really gotta pay careful attention to these smaller objects here as well because I just pulled out this this beer cap and look at that symbol that is the symbol of the German Reichsbahn that was the railway organization of the Third Reich and they also had like badges with this symbol on it and um, so I recognize this immediately um, yeah that's a really nice one didn't know that they made their own beer that's interesting maybe they even serve these beers on the Reichsbahn railway that's an interesting thought isn't it beautiful winter weather Look at that snow. Well, I must say, 
I'm happy it's snow and not rain. Snow is falling upon us, but we don't care. We're just gonna keep going. And Ray actually pulled out the second gas mask of this strip. <laughs> That looks like a different one than the one that I found. What are those straps? I haven't really yeah. seen that before. Yeah, to put it around your yeah. head. And so, you can see a stamp there. There's an eagle with swastika and a WAA code. So it's marked. Second one of this trip. Really neat. Well, let's carry on. Let's see if we can find more. All right, so we moved a bit further. And as you can see, there is a lot of debris here on the surface already. Left behind by other diggers, but we cannot complain about that because look at what's on the surface here. This is just laying here. All of these eagles, this marked porcelain. It's just already there. This is Luftwaffe porcelain. This is regular Wehrmacht porcelain. Oh, wow, look at that. 1939. And actually we encountered another digger here. He was okay with me showing some of the things he found. And that includes a Luftwaffe porcelain cup. But he also actually found some WHW badges. And if you know what my channel is about, then you've seen a lot of these. At these dump sites, we often find WHW badges. They're usually made from Bakelite, and this is a really nice one. I think it says Graz, it's a city in Austria. It's a really neat one. So that's here too, that's good to know. And we've already seen a lot of porcelain, so I think I'm gonna stop talking now and uh, find a nice spot to dig. All right, let's dig in. So I was just called over by Ray. Uh, there it is. And there's a Lausanne tin Bakelite container as well. And that's the Brandenburger Tor, I believe. Nice one. As you probably can see already, there's a lot of glassware here. And Faye just called me over because she just found two Opecta bottles. Those are always cool to find. The, actually, the father of Anne Frank made these bottles. He had a fruit juice company. And this was a really famous brand. So this, uh, this contained fruit juice. Interesting. More WHW badges. It's the same series as a couple minutes ago. Um, but there's a different pattern on there. Let's hope I'm gonna find a WHW badge too today. We're all digging here, close to each other. And um, yeah, me and Faye are working together. We're trying to make a new pit here and go very deep. So maybe we can find some unbroken stuff there. And while doing so, I just discovered this thermometer. And look how great that condition still is. There's all of the numbers, the temperatures, and look what it says here. It says here. I think that points out to a, to a Wehrmacht Heer soldier. Here was actually the name of the German infantry component of the Wehrmacht. That's really cool. We're digging here a Wehrmacht base. Um, so this is probably the dump site of that base. And this was for sure used by those soldiers. Finally, the moment is there. I'm not sticking behind. Um, yeah, so we just found that thermometer. Also a piece of porcelain. And my next find from this excavation is a WHW badge. And again, it's the same series as um, Ray and Jeffrey uh, found badges from. Oh, he has one of the houses. <laughs> well, he couldn't stay behind either. Well, it's 3-1 to be, to be honest. But so yeah, that, that's, that's one of the houses. We've seen those before. I have personally not found these before from this series. So there's Berlin landmarks on there, I believe. While me and Faye are working on this excavation over here with the sifter, Jack called me over a couple meters further because he found his very first WHW badge. Cool. And Your hand. Yeah, there we go. We haven't seen this one before. This trip, I mean, it's a glass one. And there's a landmark on there with writing. You could set these up straight, like some sort of, uh, I don't know, almost like a token of a game. Oh yeah, by the way, and uh, there's also a shoulder board here. We ducked that out a couple minutes ago from a German uniform that was on the shoulders. That's very interesting too. Yeah, it's hard work here, but we gotta do what we gotta do, right? We just landed in my excavation site. And I wanted to share something with you. We found a lot of broken porcelain, but no complete parts yet. And as you can see, we might have our first complete cup here. So I'm not sure if it actually is complete, but I wanted to do this together. See if he can grab it. Yeah. Cup is complete. Is there a stamp on there? Oh, yes, there is. Complete stamp, complete cup. 
Only the ear is missing. That's probably why it was discarded. Lufthafen porcelain, Lufthafen cup from 1938. This is going to be the last recording of today. It's still snowing, but we're losing light. So let me just give you an overview of what we found here. There's just porcelain everywhere here. We found three WHW badges here. Uh, my buddies found more even. Let me just walk you to the other side, show you the last bits. Obviously we found some WHW badges, but mostly we found porcelain from different types, from the Wehrmacht, from the Luftwaffe. Let me just walk over to Jack because he's still killing it on the final minutes. Pull out some new WHW badges, some porcelain bits. Yeah, there we go. That's really nice, man. Great finds. It's a lot of history right there. Um, yeah, obviously a lot of bottles. <laughs> I really wonder if you can still make it out of this hole. But we're probably able to help you with that, so. <laughs> Time to get our gear, travel back home. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my Patreon if you haven't already, if you want some exclusive looks behind the scenes and support us while you're at it. So thanks again. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.